you know, Dad separated from Mum when uh, I was like three or four, maybe five. So, I didn't know that. so he went off in another direction. I didn't see him much at all. And you know, the like only three or four years old. Yeah, oh, I, I maybe saw him four, maybe eight times at the most before his death. And so, how old were you then? Seventeen. So in 14 years, you had eight meetings with your dad. Maybe a few more here and there, but it oh, was it man. was it was few and far between. Was it fatherly or? It was difficult. Yeah. It was very difficult, and also seeing as he'd started a new life with Yoko and having another baby, Sean, the whole attention was directed over yeah. there. So, I mean, wow. when when Mum separated, you know, uh, all she asked for was clothes for my back, food for my stomach, and enough money to put me through school. So we grew up basically uh, uh, not poor, but we I mean, weren't poor, but we weren't rich Not like either. you think John sent Lennon son would grow up. Oh, no, no. no. And, and, the, wow. and, and it was very difficult for her and for me because the majority of people still today in the world believe that, huh? you know, I've had millions since mm. I was huh. three years old. If you, if you would have asked me, I, I would say that. Yeah. And I've, I've, I've always worked for my own money. I, you know, I've waited, I've done this, I've done that, and finally I t took off with music. So, I mean, everything that I have done and my mother has done has purely come from our own hard work, you know. Um, and it seems that everyone knowing or hearing of your father seems like they know your father, and how is that? Uh, well, it's very difficult because, I mean, I appreciated the man's music very much. I think he and the rest of the guys in the Beatles were phenomenal. Mm. But as a father, uh, I don't have much respect for him at all, and, and as a person to some degree. I mean, it's, I forgive him because uh, obviously it must have been a very difficult and strange time, especially with the, the huge success oh. and, mm. and uh, just the diverse, diversity of moving around the world, meeting different creative yeah. people. So I understand it, but uh, uh, from a son's point of view, looking back to see where his father was, knowing he was around, but n not communicating was a difficult thing to deal with. Mm. And so I have a lot of, there is, there is still some bitterness there, of course, but, but there is forgiveness also. And, and so it's very, as you were saying, it's very difficult when people come up to you and say, man, we love your father so much. Yeah, you know? yeah. And I'm going, you don't know the half of it. <laughs> you, know? You, you know, you said, and you, I, you know, I, I'm just like, mm. and, and, and I have to keep my cool. I have to, because mm. they don't know any different, you know? Yeah. And so it's okay. I'll deal. I'll deal with it. I've always dealt with it. I'm going to have to continue dealing with it. And so it's it, it, a lot of it was coming to terms with all of that, mm. and it still bugs me. You know, actually, I had uh, I had an Italian stepfather who was was very much more like a father to me than my biological father. And how old were you when when he was with your mom? Um, from. Roughly the age of between somewhere in five, six, seven till uh, for about five years or more. I was in a private school, you know, a, uh, you know, private money school, and and there was a comprehensive school across the street, which mm -hmm. was you know paid for uh, um, by the government. And um, I would have to either run home for my life, literally. Most I lived about a mile away from the school. Why? And. Mm -hmm. Because the kids in the in the comprehensive school all believed that I was the the rich kid. I've tried to explain it so many times in interviews and magazines, and yeah. they say, "Yeah, well, you're sure." Well, you ever father. try and uh, yeah, explain sure. that to your father? Well, no, it was too late. You know, I was just trying to get to know him in the first place, mm. yeah. and it was difficult enough as as that was. You know, what do you remember about that? It was it was a lot of distance. You know, I I, I wanted to run up and grab him and hold him and say I loved him and mm. but it was he didn't know how to handle that I mean it was very I mean I can understand that point of view you separate from a kid you have a kid somewhere in the world that you know is in England and you're living in America with a new family mm. and your kid wants to come over and see you and you don't know him mm. uh, it's got to be strange it's got to be Weird but in a sense, you didn't know him, and you really wanted to embrace him. I wonder if there was any. Yeah, but I was also scared wanted. at the same time because because there had been in certain situations where where he was quite verbally aggressive. Mm -hmm. You know, if I did something wrong, it wouldn't just be Jules. You know, but he hit you. I mean, what do you mean? No, no, verbally aggressive. Verbally aggressive. Did you have a look at them? Scared the living daylights out of me, and mm -hmm. and has affected me in life.
Uh, wow. I, I mean, his. How old were you in that when you remember some of these things happening? It was it was through eleven to seventeen. Did you ever point. live with him? Hmm? Did you ever live together? No. Oh man! So the few times you'd see him, and some of these times you're wishing that he'd hug you or kiss you, and you'd do the same. You'd do something, and he he verbally yeah was yeah. I, I used to I used to smile a uh, smile a lot and laugh a lot, and yeah. I. I I really got shouted at heavily for enjoying life, hmm. and for many years, for many years, I've only just broken through it. In the past couple of years, I would, I wouldn't laugh, I wouldn't smile, I would, I would oh, always, bec just because subconsciously it was in there that if, if I tried to enjoy life and have a good time, that, that I'd be told off. Why? Why do you, what do you think do? it was? Yeah. Why do you think that was like that to uh, you? I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it was. I think it it annoyed him to a certain degree. So you were enjoying yourself? Yeah. I, I mean, I, I honestly don't know, you know, but it was it was very strange. I feel that one of, uh, well, I wouldn't say it was his, his fault, but I feel one of the difficulties that Dad had with me being around was, I mean, you're never ready for children, but I don't, I think he definitely wasn't ready for children. Was he young? Yeah, uh, early 20s, 20, yeah. you know, so uh, so with the fame, with everything else that was going on. So yeah. so I clearly understand that. And so in respect of that, I mean, there has been opportunities where, where I could have had children. But in my own heart and mind and soul, I feel that there will be a right time and that I have too much work to do at present for the next couple of years after I've achieved the goals that I've set forth in my own mind then I can seriously consider a family and taking care of that family and looking after them as best mm. as, as, as I can as I've in the past gone on without him in my life I continue to do so but obviously there are times when I think about him a lot and maybe I do talk to him while I'm lying in bed looking at the ceiling. Maybe he does hear me. So, um, you know, I missed him then, I miss him now, but but it's it's part of life. I have to accept that and uh, I have to live my own life. And that's the most important for me thing for me to do at this time, you know.